Hi, this is Noel with CreationEffects.com, and this is the tutorial for the 3D Flag template for Adobe After Effects. It's an inexpensive template that lets you quickly create a custom 3D flag animation, and the flag flaps in the wind, and you can customize the 3D ripples and the movement, and best of all, it doesn't require any plugins because it's made entirely in After Effects. There are some After Effects templates out there that have great looking flags, uh, but the flags are made with expensive 3D plugins, and you have to have the plugin in order to change the flag. And also, those templates are expensive. So, this one provides a high quality flag for a low price, and it's easy to use, and all you need is After Effects. You can use any image for your flag, and it comes with a bunch of popular country flags. It also has a 3D flagpole that you can customize, as well as nine flagpole images to choose from. Uh, it has different fabric textures, and it also includes some sound effects. So let me show you how to use it. Uh, for most users, you can simply just drop in your flag image, and the flag is ready to go uh, with the default settings. But there are a ton of customization options here, so that's what I'm going to be spending most of this video covering. Okay, first of all, let me go over how to open the zip file that you'll download from Creation Effects. If you're on a PC, you should right click it and look for an option that says Extract All and open the contents that way, and that will help you prevent errors in After Effects. Uh, if you're on a Mac, though, you can just double click it to open it. And then just open that 3D flag.aep file in Adobe After Effects. Uh, 2019 or later. So version 17.0 or later. Alright, so when you open up the template, you'll see some instructions here for getting started. Uh, so you'll want to read through that. And then the first thing you're going to do is choose a resolution for your flag. So you can see we've got three different options here. Uh, this is width by height. So this is how big your flag will be in pixels when it's at a 100% scale. And they get slower the higher resolution they are, so don't choose a higher resolution than you need. Um, for the tutorial, I'm just going to go with the 1000 by 500 pixel one. Um, so open up that folder, and then you'll see another folder inside named Precomps, and open that up. And then look for the Precomp name, Put Your Flag Image Here. So when I open that up, uh, you can see we've already got an American flag in there by default. Um, I'll get rid of that one. And I'll open up my images folder and then country flags. And I've already made a ugly flag with my logo on it for just this occasion. So I'm going to put that in there. And there are 25 common flag images in here that you can choose from, or uh, you can get, you can use whatever image you want really. Just drag it into the timeline, and uh, you can see this image is bigger than the comp. So we need to scale it down to fit inside the comp. So I'll hit the S key to bring up the scale and I'll start dragging it down. You'll scale it until it fits vertically inside the comp. So you want the top and bottom of the image to meet the top and bottom of the comp. And it's okay if it's not as wide as the comp. And once you do that, uh, just drag the image over until it's flush left or justified left, whatever you want to call it. So it's okay if there is empty space on the right side. We just need to make sure that the top, left, and bottom sides all touch uh, the edges of that comp. Um, because most flags aren't going to fit this comp exactly. Now if, if your flag happens to be wider than this comp, and I mean you've already scaled it down so that it fits vertically and the flag is still too wide, you can just uh, widen this, the resolution of this comp. So you would go to Composition and Composition Settings, and you could enter in a new width like 1200 pixels in here. Just don't increase the height of the comp. The height has to stay the same. And let me just go over a couple other things you can do. Uh, I'll zoom out. Um, if you wanted a, a flag that was an irregular shape, like maybe you wanted it to come into a, a point, like a triangle, um, you can always do that with the pen tool. Just draw out your shape. Or maybe you want a vertical flag. I had a, a shot in the demo video that used a vertical flag. You can just crop it like that or create a new solid in this shape. Um, if you were making a vertical flag like this, you probably would want to 
change the comp size and make it match. You probably don't want this much empty space. Um, you could also add some text if you wanted to, or you could drop in a, another image or overlay a video over your flag, whatever you want. Once you do that, if you want, you can choose a fabric texture for your flag. So open up this comp, put your fabric texture here, and there are several different options in here. You can go through them, just unhide the one that you want to use. Um, these will all get uh, shrunk down and tiled so that they repeat themselves, and you can you'll you'll do that using the customization controls. But uh, in this step, you just choose the one you want, and then close that comp. And these other comps you probably won't need to mess with unless uh, you need to do some heavy customization for some reason. I'm just going to close that pre-comp folder and I'm going to open up my main flag comp. And, you know, I thought that black might be a problem. It's going to be, it might be hard to see the details. I'm going to actually go back and change it. I'll put my American flag back in there. It's all right. You've already seen my logo. It's seared into your memory forever, so it's okay to change it. Okay, that's just a little easier to see. I'll play this back and you can see what it looks like. All right, so that's what it looks like. Uh, you can see we've got some ripples moving across the flag and it's warping and waving in the wind. Uh, we even got some uh, folding going on with this top right corner coming down a little bit. And there's some 3D oscillation going on, which you can't really see from this angle, but we'll look at that later. And uh, the rope is flapping in the wind. Uh, lots of good stuff going on, and all of it can be customized. And I should note that I've got the preview resolution set to half, uh, which just makes it run a little faster, so I recommend that you, you keep it at half or less especially with the higher resolution flags. And let's take a look at all these layers. Um, there's quite a few, almost 50. So if, if that seems overwhelming to you, um, you can just click this little picture of the, this cute guy behind the wall. That's the shy switch. And that will turn off all the layers that you don't really need to see. Um, that might just make it easier to add your background and your titles or whatever you're going to do. I'll turn that off. And I want to explain one important rule for this comp, and that is that you can't transfer these layers to another comp. So let's say you've already started another comp and added some elements in there, and you wanted to add a, a flag to it. Uh, don't select all these layers and then copy and paste them because uh, the effect won't work right. You're gonna have to copy the layers from that comp and put them in here. Uh, that's the only catch. But you can rename this, this comp if you want to, uh, to whatever you want. I'll just call it my flag. Uh, just remember that these layers need to stay inside this comp for it to work right. Okay, so at the very top you see this instructions layer. You can unhide that and read through those. Um, I'm going over all of this stuff with you now, so we don't need that. And you're going to see these layers in pretty much all of the, the pre-comps. Uh, so if you ever need more info, you can just unhide that and read through the instructions. Next we have a camera layer. Um, so you can use your camera tools uh, that are up here, or you can just hit the C key. When you hit the C key, it cycles through the different tools. Um, I like the orbit around scene tool for getting a different view. And you can also shift your camera left, right, up or down, or move in or move out. So next we've got this flag control layer. Uh, if you select that and then go to your effect controls panel up here, and if you don't see this panel, just go to window and choose effect controls. Uh, so in here you've got all the different customization controls that you can use to customize your flag. Next we've got a fl the flag base. If I solo that layer, uh, that's what this is. It's, it's the base of the flag with the ropes. And next we've got a bunch of different layers that make up the flag. So you can see they're divided up into segments. And if I solo some of these, 
You can see how each segment is just a, a sliver of the flag. So all these segments are connected to each other and um, they're oscillating or rotating. Uh, each one is rotating on a delay, which is how we get that 3D oscillation. Uh, I'm going to go over that more in later on. Um, next we've got the flagpole control layer. And then the flagpole is also created with multiple layers or multiple segments. Each one is a very tiny sliver. They're wrapped around 360 degrees to create a, th a real 3D pole. And then way at the bottom, we've got several other different 3D elements uh, that go on the pole, like the, uh, the ball at the top and the pulley, and there's a, a rope cleat down at the bottom. So uh, let me go over how to move the flag. All of these layers are parented to the flag control layer. So if you move or scale or rotate the flag control layer, that will affect the entire flagpole and flag. So you can do that like this, and you can move it around in 3D space, or you could scale it down, and it scales down from the anchor point, which is right here to the left of the flag. Now, if you want to move just the flag by itself, you would select this layer here, Flag Segment Start. Um, you can see in the comments here, it, it talks about moving the flag by itself. Anyway, uh, the Flag Segment Start layer, if you select that, then you can move the entire flag uh, horizontally. Now, look what happens when you try and move it vertically. It just moves that one segment and it gets all distorted. So if you do need to shift the flag vertically, you would actually need to select all of the flag layers, starting with Flag Segment Start, and then Shift Select Flag Segment End. And now you can drag them up or use the arrow key on your keyboard to move them up or down. And lastly, if you just want to move the flag pole without moving the flag, then you would select this layer, the flag pole control layer. And the anchor point is somewhere down low, so it's down here. So you can see if you can shift it that way. You can make the pole taller by scaling that layer on the y-axis. Um, you can see that the other elements on the, of the flag, like the pulley and the ball, are not attached to that, that pole. Um, but you can adjust those layers individually if you need to, just by moving them around in 3D space. All right, so let me go over how to change the flagpole, because maybe you don't like this flagpole. Th this one is 3D, so it does have its, its advantages. You can view it from any angle, and the perspective will be correct. But if you're just looking at your flag from the front, um, that's not really going to be that important to have it 3D. And the template comes with a number of, of 2D flagpoles, which you can easily swap out if you want a different look. So in your images folder, open up the 2D flagpoles folder, and you've got nine different images here that you can choose from. You can just drag them in and enable 3D for the layer, and it will automatically go into place. Um, all you would need to do is to scale it down to whatever size you want, and you can move it into place. Um, I should have turned off the other flagpole. Um, you, what you can do is just hide these layers, all of the flagpole layers. So that covers the basics. I think uh, that's all the information you need to implement the flag into your scene. Uh, the rest of the video, I'm going to be going over the control layer and what all these different controls do. Okay, so in your effect controls panel, you can see we've got uh, six different groups of controls. We've got just some general controls at the top, and then we've got controls for just the flagpole, and for the flag base right here. And then we've got uh, three different groups of controls for flag movement. You can turn any of them off if you just look for these checkboxes. So when you're customizing one of these, it might be a good idea to turn off the others, uh, just so that you can clearly see what changes you're making. And it'll make it run a little bit faster as well. Start at the top, the general appearance controls. 
uh, brightness and contrast, that's pretty self-explanatory. You can crank up the contrast. Uh, it only goes to 200. Um, if it's not enough for you, there's actually another way to add additional contrast uh, in the 2D ripple controls. Anyway, fabric texture strength. Uh, you can adjust the opacity of your fabric texture. And like I mentioned earlier, you can scale that texture down uh, if you want more details. If you're far away from the flag like this, it's not going to matter that much. And then the random seed, uh, you can change this to any value and it's going to give you new random results for how the flag moves and the ripples and the oscillation, everything that uses random movement. So it's totally fine to go with all the, the default settings for this flag and uh, it'll save you a lot of time if you just go with the default settings. But the one thing you might want to change before rendering your animation is this random seed, uh, just to give you a completely new and unique flag movement. Um, or if, if there's something you don't like about your, your flag movement, you can always just change this and get something different. So in the flagpole controls, uh, you can see we can turn on or off the flagpole and uh, turn on or off the rope. So you can turn off different elements depending on what you need. Maybe you don't need a flagpole at all, so you can just turn it off there. Or like I said, you can hide the layers. Uh, that might actually make it run faster. Um, you can change the color of the flagpole or the color of the ball. Um, if you need to make more adjustments to that ball, uh, you can just go down to that gold ball layer and uh, you can edit the CC sphere effect properties. Uh, so you've got a radius which controls the, the size of the ball. Um, if you wanted to adjust the lighting, so right now you can see from the flagpole, the light is on the right side. Uh, but maybe in your scene, the light is over here. So you can adjust the lighting position on the on the ball as well as the flagpole. Uh, let me show you how to do that. In the pre-comps folder, there's this comp pole texture pre-comp. You can open that up. So here's the pole texture. If you select the shadow and highlight layer and then go to your effect controls panel, uh, there's this offset control. If you open that up and then you can shift the highlights. Uh, flagpole diameter, make that whatever you want. Um, and then remember uh, the length of the flagpole, you would adjust that by increasing the scale of this control layer. So you can scale it on the Y axis. And lastly, we've got the rope shaking. Uh, you can change the amount and the speed at which the rope shakes in the wind uh, using this control. All right, next we've got the flag base controls. Um, you could turn that off if you want. So maybe you don't want that base at all. And then you could just shift this flag right up against the flagpole if you wanted to. Uh, remember, you would do that by, by moving this flag segment start layer. I'll turn my base back on. And you can adjust the color of it. You can adjust the curve. So you can see that this curves inward like you would get if you know, realistically if a flag was blowing in the wind. Um, and you can turn that up a little bit, but you don't want to go too far um, because then you might see some gaps. Um, because the flag and the flag base, they use different effects to get that curve and they're not always in sync. So you don't want to overdo this control. I'll just keep it at 30. Okay, next we have 3D oscillation. We talked about that briefly. Uh, I'm going to actually turn off these other effects so we can see the oscillation better. And uh, you'll notice that we can still see our ripples, even though I turned off 2D ripples. Um, and that's actually this contrast control up here. So if you didn't want to see that, you just turn that to zero. And we can keep it on. All right, to see the 3D oscillation, I'm going to move my camera to a high angle. So I'll use my orbit tool and just click and drag. And let me play that back. So now we can see how this flag is waving in 3D. And note how it's kind of irregular. So it's it speeds up and then slows down. Um, sometimes the wavelength is shorter. Sometimes it's much wider. So that variation kind of adds to the realism. In our controls uh, here, we've got 
three main controls, the frequency, the wavelength, and the amplitude. So frequency will control the speed at which those, those waves move from left to right. So if you wanted it to be a really windy day, uh, you might want to move that up a little bit higher. The wavelength, uh, that determines how many ripples you're going to see. So it, it might actually be opposite of what you expect. If you turn it down, it's going to get wider. The ripples are wider. The ripples. The ripples are wider. If you turn it up, you've got more ripples. Let me set that back to 40. And then we've got amplitude, which determines how high those waves are going to be. So especially at this high amplitude, you can see the different segments of this flag. They're all connected and they're all rotating slightly, um, but on a delay, which is how you get that oscillation effect. The cool thing about this is if you start to see the edges, the corners, you can always increase the resolution of this flag to make it smoother. And it's really easy. Uh, right now we've got 20, and with the last segment, 21 segments. If you do want more segments, you just select any of these middle segments, uh, not the start segment and not the end segment, but any of these middle ones that are numbered, and you just duplicate it. So that's Command or Control D. Um, don't copy and paste. That actually won't work. Be sure to duplicate it. Uh, the other way to do it would be go to edit and then duplicate. And uh, if you want, you can move that down so that the numbers are in order, but it doesn't really matter. Um, if you want to go even faster, you just select a whole bunch and then duplicate them all at once. So now we've got a, about double what we had, something like 40 segments. And uh, that made each segment narrower, which will end up making it look smoother, but it also screwed everything up with the, uh, the amplitude and wavelength. So after you add more segments, you're going to want to go back to your controls and adjust the wavelength and the amplitude if needed. Um, chances are you're not going to need more segments, but uh, that option is there if you want it. I'm going to undo all of that. All right, so we're at our default settings again. Um, the next control is this incremental ampl amplitude, and I wrote a short description of what that does here. Let me crank it up and you can see a little bit better. So it increases the amplitude more and more the further down the flag you are. So, so really, uh, this first amplitude control just controls the bass, how much that bass is moving back and forth in Z space. So if this were at zero, all segments are now oscillating at the same amplitude. Um, but if you increase that, you can see that the, uh, the amplitude gets more and more. Um, I might say that it's amplified amplitude if I were trying to be cute. All right, so next we've got closed gaps between segments. Um, all of these segments are touching each other technically but you still might encounter a problem where you can see a small gap between the segments. So our background is black, so it might appear as a black vertical line or lots of lines. Um, it might depend on how close you are to the flag or what angle you're looking at the flag. Um, so if you do see gaps, you can just turn this up until you don't see them anymore. It just brings this, each segment closer to each other. And also, you might be able to see those segments in half resolution, and then when you go to full, um, they disappear. Uh, in which case, you don't need this, but uh, keep that in mind. All right, well, lastly, in our 3D oscillation controls, we have these variance controls. So I talked about how there's uh, some variation in the speed and the wavelength, so you can control that here. You've got a wiggle amount and a wiggle speed, uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with the wiggle expression in After Effects. All these do is it makes these values fluctuate randomly. So we've got a wiggle amount and wiggle speed for the, uh, the wavelength and also for the amplitude. So wavelength wiggle amount is 50%, which would be 50% of 40, which would be 20. So this value will fluctuate by about 20, and it will do that 
at a speed of about 0.5 times per second. So these speed controls are very sensitive. You want to keep these low, like a decimal value. And then these amount controls um, are a percentage of what the value is up here. All right, I'm going to turn off 3D oscillation and I'll turn on 2D ripples and I'll play that back. So this is all just 2D warping. So if I were to move my camera to a high angle or to the side, uh, the flag would still just look flat because 3D oscillation is turned off. And in our 2D ripple controls, uh, we can adjust the amount of displacement or warping uh, horizontally or vertically. And with this stiffened base control, we can adjust how much the flag warps at the base or the left edge. So typically we don't want the flag to be warping at all at that left edge because this flag base layer doesn't warp. And if the flag is warping over here, then they don't really line up with each other or you might start to see gaps in between them. Uh, next we've got all of these displacement map controls. So let me talk about displacement maps. Um, and I'll actually turn it on. I'll use this texture preview on off checkbox. And that will let us actually see the displacement map or the texture. Uh, this grayscale texture determines how the flag is going to be warped. So uh, this texture can be customized uh, using these controls and that affects how your ripples are going to look. Um, I don't want to give you too much information, but uh, just so you can see where this texture is located in the template. Uh, if you double click any one of these flag segments, it'll open up a pre-comp named flag with effects. And uh, you can see that pre-comp here in your pre-comps folder. And on this layer named displacement map, um, you can see we've got a turbulent noise effect. So that's what creates this texture. And also I should point out uh, the circle effect here. This is how we make it so that the, the left side of the flag remains rigid or it just doesn't warp. You can see if I turn that off, we see more of the contrast now on this left side. But when it's on, it actually overlays this neutral gray, 50% gray color on the left side of the texture. So you can see how the dark areas of this texture are making the flag warp downward and the light areas are making the flag warp upward. If the an area of the texture is 50% gray, it's not warped at all. You can see if I actually shift this circle over to the right, it brings more of that gray color into the texture and there's just less warping now. So that's just a brief explanation and uh, now you know what that stiffened base control does. It just shifts the circle effect over. All right, the rest of these controls, as I said, they affect the look of the uh, texture, which then affects the look of the ripples. Um, if you're familiar with that turbulent noise effect, then you'll be familiar with all of these. These uh, are the different fractal types. So you can get a variety of different looks for your ripples. Um, if you just want something really smooth, you can go with the basic fractal type. Um, subscale is pretty cool because you've got areas which are very smooth and less detailed and then you've got areas which are more detailed. Um, I probably just like dynamic pro progressive the most. So you can adjust the brightness and contrast of this texture and not only does that affect how much the flag is warped but it also affects the contrast, the light and dark values of the flag. Uh, you can adjust the width and height of the texture. So if you wanted more ripples, you could turn this way down. And you can adjust the orientation, which is the direction that the ripples are slanted. Um, you actually probably don't want to move this because if you look at footage of flags flapping in the wind, the ripples are always are going in this direction. Uh, just because this is where all the tension is, uh, the flag being held up by that rope. Travel direction, that's the direction that the texture is moving. So right now this is pointed down this way, 110 degrees. If we change this, you can see how it affects 
See now the ripples are moving from right to left. I'm not sure why you would want to do that. Um, travel speed, so that would be the force of the wind. If it's a windier day, you might want to increase that by quite a bit. Evolution speed, if I slowly increase that, uh, you can just see how that changes the texture. So not only is the texture moving from left to right, but it's also evolving and changing shape. Um, ripple detail, it's, uh, if we crank that up, you'll see what that does. It just adds a lot of little details to it. And then the detail contrast, it doesn't really affect how much detail there is. It affects the light and dark contrast of those details. There, see how beautiful that is? No. Okay, when you're done customizing, you just turn that texture off. And I'm going to turn off 2D ripples now. And I'm going to go to our very last effect and turn that on, uh, flag drop. I didn't know what to call it. Um, that's as good a name as any, I guess. But this one affects how the flag not only falls with gravity, but also how it warps. So the top right corner can come down, the bottom might come up a little bit. It just makes it more natural and organic, and it can all be customized using these controls. So let's play that back and see what it looks like. So you can see how the flag goes up and down with gusts of wind and how the corner folds over a little bit. And all of that is random. And uh, remember, we've got our random seed here. So if you change this value, it'll give you completely new random movement. So let's go over these controls. The average drop amount is how high the flag is. Um, basically how strong the wind is. If you drop it more, then the flag on average will be about this high, like at 35 degree angle. But you notice how it goes up and down. Um, so that's the drop wiggle amount and the drop wiggle speed. Um, again, it uses the wiggle expression. So this means that uh, that average amount will fluctuate by an amount of about 15 at a rate of 0.8 times per second. So we could increase either the amount or the speed to see a more exaggerated up and down movement. So notice how as the flag starts to rise, um, the left area rises first and then the end of the flag follows because the wind hasn't quite reached the end of the flag. So there's a, a delay in when the end of the flag rises up. Um, so that you can control with this control, delay at end. So depending on your uh, wiggle amount or how fast it's going up and down, you may have to adjust this delay at end flexibility control. You can see what happens if, if it's too high. it becomes a little bit too flexible and it doesn't look right. Now let's say you want your animation to start with the flag in a lower position, so without any wind. You can just keyframe uh, this average drop amount. So this would be relatively high at first and you would add a keyframe and then you can go forward a second or so and then lower that value to bring the flag up. Um, let me hit the U key and we can see those two keyframes. Zoom in a little bit. And when we play it back, you'll see that we still have that delay. So the flag rises in a more natural way with the left edge coming up first and then followed by the, uh, the end. And it looks awful because I still have delay at ends at the 40, but if we bring that back down, And that needs a little bit of work, but it demonstrates how you can animate the flag to be lower and then higher. Um, also, when the corner drops like that, you do have some control over that. Um, there's this corner drop amount, or folding. So if you turn that all the way to zero, it minimizes how much that corner will drop. Or you can turn it up if you like. And then random warping. Um, that will just make certain areas of the flag along the outside edge uh, move up or down or sideways. And let me open up this pre-comp, the flag with effects pre-comp. And I'll select the layer with the flag. 
And uh, that random warping is done with this effect here, the Bezier warp. So normally, oh, let me just start a new layer here and I'll add a Bezier warp effect. So usually the Bezier warp effect has all these different tangents and vertices and you can warp the whole layer by moving them around. So with the flag, these different vertices are, are moving randomly and it favors the vertices on the right side. They move more than the vertices on the left side and the corner, it moves down more than uh, some of these other vertices as well. So you can play with those controls and see what you like or just go with the default settings. Um, that's about it. Uh, one more tip, I guess, that I wanted to share. I should have said this in the beginning. If you're already working in a project that you created and you want to add a flag to that project, probably the best way to do that um, in your current, in your original project, just go to File, Import, File, and then locate uh, the 3D flag project file and just import the whole project into your original project. And it puts all of these into one single folder in your project panel and you can access it that way. Um, also, if you need additional flags, let's say you want more than one flag in your animation, uh, you could just use the different resolutions, but um, more than likely you want them to be the same size. So you can't just duplicate one of these folders. Um, that won't work. But what you can do is just import the project file into itself. So do the same thing that I showed you. Go to File, Import, File, and bring the, the 3D flag project into this project. And you can use that second 1000 by 500 pixel flag. And you can delete these other folders. If you're not using these, uh, you can just delete them. Just make sure you've got the project backed up somewhere. And uh, I think that's... Oh, so there's some sound effects here if you want to add these to your animation. Uh, just flags flapping in the wind and a bit of metal on metal clanging like a flagpole. So that is everything I wanted to show you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked the effect. And if you like this, be sure to check out the other stuff at creationeffects.com. Uh, lots of cool effects that don't require any plugins, all for Adobe After Effects. Uh, the most recent is Pixel Pusher. It lets you make better particle animations. There's also Infinite Horizon to do perspective bending in After Effects. And there's Micro for making microscopic animations. There's also Falling Leaves. Custom flocks of birds. Swarms of insects or schools of fish and 3D books and there's a number of animal templates so you can put lions or wolves or elephants into your videos and you can make them jump or run or roar or whatever you want to do to them. There's uh, VHS effects or glitch effects or old film effects there's custom 3D oceans. There's a cool particle trails effect. And an artifacts template that has over 40 different art effects for your footage.